Damian Bartonic on behalf of Fox West Texas and the official host of MMA Monday, the only MMA show in San Angelo. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest starting off the 2024 MMA Monday series off right, the one and only, Drikus Duplessis. Drikus, my friend, how are you doing today? Production and feeling good. Fight week, fight week, so that's, that's, that's awesome. You know, finally, it feels like yesterday we started with this camp and um, yeah, now we're here. Now we're here. It's uh, it's it's going. I'm feeling good. Weight's good. Um, it's just uh, you know, making weight and uh, taking care of the, some media responsibilities. But uh, that's all fun to me. And then it's time to go to work. Yeah, man. It's crazy because this this fight happened really fast. Uh, I was anticipating you'd get the shot next after the uh, uh, whoever won the Adesanya and Strickland fight. But man, this this buildup has been so weird. You're you're typically not someone ever. Uh, and even now, I really don't think you started it, but you're not someone that really gets into a lot of the back and forth and the, you know, the craziness. And man, this, this buildup has been crazy. Uh, tell me, you know, what, what's the, the mindset like? What's the mental state like? Um, and is this at all personal for you or is it still business? Yeah, I mean, for me, the one thing I said, like all of my opponents up until now have been really respectful. respectful. I mean, especially if you, if you look at the press conferences, you know, I try to stay as true as to myself and to as close to in terms of persona. And I like my persona. I have about 50% of people I think like me, whether that ever meet me. So that's a, that's a good number. Uh, I, I like to stick to who I am and uh, give people the real me when I'm when I'm even when I'm on that stage. Of course, there's a there's a couple of things that responsibilities that you have. But um, the thing is, I'm always going to treat my opponents with respect because I respect every single person that uh, that steps into that octagon. Uh, it takes a lot of courage, and um, you know you're in the UFC for a reason, especially being a champion, because you're an exceptional athlete. So I mean, it's always going to be that way. Uh, but you know, I'm going to treat you also treat you the same way that you treat me. So for me, I'm not scared of of, of back and forth. I'm not scared of the bands. I'm not. You know, if you want to try and be smart and try and humiliate me, uh, we'll see how it works out. And uh, that's what happened with this this pressure. You know, I was respectful. I, it started out very respectful, and then uh, obviously um, things went south when uh, Shikin started to, to try and and uh, humiliate. I don't call it humiliation, but to try and to, he, he started with with the banter, and uh, I'll meet you halfway if that's what you want to do. Now, if you want to if you want to fight in the crowd, I'll fight you right back. If you're going to be respectful, I'll be respectful. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be bullied. That's not going to happen ever. Yeah, it just seemed very weird because I remember at that press conference, uh, you you both were being respectful, and then Strickland was the one that said like, "We don't have to effing be friends." Basically, is what he said. Yeah, and yeah, I think I think what happened in that scenario was the fact that Strickland, you know, what the fan? That's that's why people. That's that's what he has. That's his that's his thing. You know, saying outrageous stuff, just screaming and ranting about random things and. The crowd is I mean that's that's his niche. That's the what the crowd wants. And when um when he saw he wasn't getting that attention uh, or getting that reaction that he wanted, that's when he started to say, Okay, we're not gonna be friends and uh, you know, that whole thing happened and I was I was ready to meet him right there. It's it's fine and that's how that whole scenario played out. But it's never personal for me. Never ever. It's one hundred percent business. I'm actually quite fond of Sean Strickland. I like him. I think he's a he's a you know, he's a guy that that he stood up for himself. It's good. It's good for him. And um, you know, um, in terms of when when the fight happened in the crowd, but yeah, as a as a character and as a as a fighter, I have a lot of respect for him. And uh, like I said, it's never personal. And uh, there are some guys I don't like in 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 the, in the game, but he's not one of them. For me, you know. I always say you can be the nicest guy or the biggest asshole. I'm going to treat you the exact same way when that octagon door closes. Absolutely, and it's it's funny that you say like oh, that you liked him because I remember whenever we first talked, you did say that you did say like you were you actually like like Sean Strickland, like you were you know not say like you were his biggest fan, but you didn't you didn't have any any ill will anything like that towards him. Uh, and kind of to mirror that, the last time we spoke, your your you know your situation, your feud, I guess if you want to call it that, uh, with Israel Adesanya was a big deal. But this one seems different in the fact of like those two things, like the, Adesanya and your you know 
beef like was was one sided. It seemed uh, with with Adesanya, and this one as well seems one sided too. I, I, at some point, do you ever kind of reflect and be like, "What the heck is going on?" Like, what, like, what? you know, you're just sitting back chilling, and it's like people are picking a fight with you. Do you feel like they kind of mistake your your demeanor as a weakness? Yeah, I think that it, it, it can be that, and I think, um, you know, that's that's what happens when uh, when uh, when a new uh, when a new offer arrives. Right. That's what that's how I see it. I see I see this as a as there's a new offer. He looks better. He talks better. Everything. He looks intimidating. Yeah. He looks, mm -hmm. and it, he's threatening, and that rattles feathers. And that's why you see them puff up their chest and try to intimidate me. I think that's what is, what's happening. And um, I told them that I'm here to stay when I got into that top ten. And ever since then, you know, up until this point, there wasn't really anything like that. But you see, without a sign scenario, once I started getting closer to that top spot, I think the the vision, the top guys started taking notice, and that's like I said, there's a new alpha in town. And I think too, the fans kind of reciprocate that the the respect that they have for you because let's be honest, Drikas, you've beaten a lot of fan favorites up to this point. You beat Darren Till uh, about a year and a half ago. You beat a Rob Whitaker, right? These guys are are beloved by fans. Uh, you know, you were going to fight Adesanya, who has a huge fan base. Sean Strickland, even though he says a lot of crazy things, like you said, he has the fans on his side. Uh, you're you're always like the heel in these situations. But, I, I mean, just knowing you from our conversations, both at some events and here through the interviews, you're not at all a really heel kind of person. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you know, what is what is what is that like for you, man, to, to experience that? Yeah, I mean, I. I... I knew coming coming in that that was probably going to happen. Uh, I, I'm yet to get my first cheers walking out. I do get them after the fight, but uh, you know, fighting fan favorites that's unfortunately the well, not actually unfortunately that is that is the case. When I fought Darren Till, even though we're both foreigners, people love Darren Till. He's been in the UFC for long. He's he, you know he's a fan favorite fighter, and like I said, I'm the new alpha. And uh, I still have to earn that right. I have to earn that that respect and earn that cheer, earn those cheers from the fans that, that uh, a guy like Robert Whitaker has earned, and rightfully so. He's a he's a gentleman of a man. He's an exceptional athlete, exceptional human, and uh, he deserves to be a fan favorite. And that is, you know, I still have to earn that 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 respect and that the cheer from the crowd, uh, especially being from 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 outside of America, uh, the American crowd. That's that's that that makes sense and. For me to, um, you know, it, it's not something that bothers me. It's not something, you know, the cheers don't get to my head, so the boos don't get to my head. As long as there's noise, there's one crowd I can tell you that I absolutely hated, and that was a Fight Island crowd, because there was no crowd. Yeah. That was, that was, that sucked. And the crowd, this is, this is a spectator sport. We are gladiators, and I love to be in that Coliseum with the crowd going crazy. Yeah, now let's, let's transition to this upcoming fight. Let's, let's talk about uh, you're on the cusp of, you know, greatness of history. Uh, you mentioned bringing the belt home to Africa. I know you love that South African air, so tell me, what is up with this Canadian air? How's the Canadian air up there? What, what's it like? How's it been up there in, in Canada? I mean, it's completely different. I mean, we have summer right now in South Africa, so it's so hot. It's The, the weather is, is incredible. It's in the middle of summer. And then... Uh, you come here yesterday we went for a, a dip in the atari lake and it was i mean we went basically for a cold plunge we were in the water for maybe a minute uh people will catch that on the embedded it was <laughs> insane and then when we, we got out so i dove in we got out it was minus 10 degrees if i'm not mistaken oh yeah, I think it was minus 10 and it was a lot worse than i anticipated because i do cold plunges every day with the same degrees like three four degree water so it's it's really cold but that's not the when we got out and it's minus 10 outside with wind blowing i mean the sand was frozen that we were on at the lake it was it was ridiculous and i got out but my hair was obviously wet and within 15 seconds of getting out my hair was frozen solid oh my god my <laughs> hair was just frozen it was it was the in most i couldn't immediately i realized this we're in trouble this is not as like when I take, I took my my swim shorts off, and they were frozen with, and I put my other, um, I put my my jeans back on, and as we do that, I try to pick it up, and it's frozen solid. The the pants oh just from that wind, 
And this, that was a, it took me more than an hour to, to heat up. I couldn't use my hands to try my, it was, but it was, it was cool because, you know, yeah, I'm really enjoying Canada because it's such a different environment that I'm used to. So it's, it's, it's great to see. I'm staying a couple of days extra to really enjoy Canada for what it has to offer. The food scene here is amazing. And right now I'm just a window shopper at every restaurant. So after the fight, yeah. we'll make sure to see what the, what the vibe is like. As I always rate the places that I visit at the people and Canada gets a 10 out of 10 for the amazing people. Yeah. Everybody's super friendly, super nice, super helpful. Um, they get a lot of shit from a lot of people all over the world. It's my first time in Canada, but I love the the Canada. The Canadian people were incredible to me thus far, and um, it's a beautiful city. It is beautiful. I'm not a big city guy, but this uh, Toronto is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been in, and uh, I'm looking forward to going and, and enjoying it because that's how I enjoy any place that I go and visit all over the world. Is see what the beer is like, see what the vibe is like when you get into a bar and the food. And the food looks amazing. The beer I know will be amazing. And then uh, we'll see the vibe after the fight. Absolutely. Just a few more for you, man. You mentioned you're a window shopper at these restaurants. And I do want to know, I'm not going to ask you specifically about the weight cut, but when we talk about uh, the diet the week of the fight, how many meals are, like, are you eating? And is it a lot of like intermittent fasting? Is it maybe like a four-hour eating window, two-hour eating window, or how does that all that go about? Is how how strict, how difficult is it? Yeah, the big thing on fight week is about it's manipulating water. It's not a calorie in, calorie out situation. Okay. That's happening in in during the camp. So as soon as the fight week starts, it's all about you know limit no salts and sodium. That's a big thing. So because that's what keeps water in your body. So you're basically drinking a whole lot of water to make sure that uh, that the body flushes all that water and your body has enough water to for when the cut happens, that your body lets go of all that water because it's used to having the water. And then you know, I have three meals a day with some snacks in between, all prepared by by, by the nutritionist. And uh, you know, it's mostly protein and fats. I don't I don't do a lot of carbs, maybe some of the fruits in between i usually do carbs, but in fight week because carbs also hold back water so it's more like the fruits and stuff to have energy for training but yeah the last week of uh, of the diet is very specific and um yeah it's not the easiest thing but uh, you get through yeah, yeah whenever, whenever i cut weight uh, for my jiu-jitsu competition i had to cut a little bit as well and uh while it wasn't you know to the level of you guys because you guys have you know way better nutrition than i than i got and all this other stuff uh it was difficult man it was it was rough then it was the same thing yeah, you know, I mean, I had there's times where you know you're you're drinking all the water, doing the same thing. I'm cutting out salt, um, you know, sodium and all that stuff. And man, it, it was, was rough. rough. I made the weight, you know, so I, I made the weight. I ended up getting silver in the competition, so I was a little hurt. Uh, but I competed with my labrum torn, so maybe I get a I get a little participation handshake or hand clap. Hundred percent, man. That's what you get. Man. That's <laughs> it, uh, you know, always respect the man in the arena, no matter what. And that's that's it, man. Making sure you make that weight and. You put it back the correct way to be able to perform. That's 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 the only thing right now. The the next the next hurdle is making weight. That's the that's the next objective, and then joining that fight. Absolutely. Just a couple more for you, man. Uh, let's talk about the fight again. I, I asked you this before your bout was announced. Um, I said a lot of times, you know, a lot of a lot of champions, a lot of fighters, they believe and feel that they are the champion before they have the physical belt. I asked you that, and you told me, yes, you believe it. Um, and you know, you told me that you train like a champion. Now, now that we are days away from this fight, um, does that question, does that statement maybe, do you have anything different to say? Has it, is it a little bit different now that you know you're actually going to be walking into the cage fighting for a belt? Yeah, I mean, the, the camp went absolutely insane. It was, it was an incredible camp. We, we, uh, we always try to train um, I always train like I am fighting for a world title. And now that I actually fought for a world title, is this is it extra motivation? No, because I'm always maximum there's always maximum motivation. But you know, this is a step close and uh I that's that's the extra motivation. Every time you look at a guy that I'm gonna fight, you look at this guy and you know it's not a guy that's gonna go away. It's not a guy that you're gonna hit with a one big shot and he's going to be um, scared he's gonna you know he's gonna crumble no it's a guy that you're gonna to have to beat you're gonna to have to go and take that win from him you're gonna take that belt from him and um, you know, that's always some extra motivation and, and 
it's uh that motivation can't come in training because I'm already maxed out in that motivation. It's it's the mental motivation. It's you know, that self belief that needs to be right up there, and I know I can beat this man into giving me that belt. Absolutely. My last one for you, Drikus. Um I'm a big fan of visualization. I, all I can do at the gym right now is just walk the track. So that whole time, I'm just visualizing what it's going to be like when I'm back to kickboxing, back to jujitsu. And I work on TV, so it's even kind of more difficult being on camera with the sling, right? But yeah. uh, I'm big into the visualization. And for you, I want to ask, whenever you do visualize, not the fight, but after, when, when, you, you, know, when you win the belt, what are those emotions like? What are those what are those visualizations like? Is it hard to hold back maybe a tear or two when you think of, you know, winning that belt? Yeah, yeah no, it's it's, it's, it's incredibly hard, right? It's, 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 it's my, my whole life stream. This is a, up until this point, this is the biggest thing that I'll, I'll do. This is one of the biggest things I'll ever do. And, uh, you know, exactly like you're saying, like all the people that's been there and everybody's coming to support, my family's coming with you. The, all the people that's been behind me this whole journey, you know, it comes to this point and there's almost it feels like there is no tomorrow with, after this fight but there is this is only the beginning of a reign my reign this is this is the step that's going to create the legacy by thinking about that that moment when they wrapped that, that belt around my waist the, the exact words of and the new middleweight champion of the world the amount of years and the, the hours i've spent just thinking about those words and visualizing those words Coming into reality, you can't help but tear up when you hear that and you think about that. It's going to be a, a badass fight. Uh, I'm supposed to be unbiased, so I won't tell anyone on camera uh, who I'm rooting for and everything like that. But I will say, uh, it, it has been an honor to speak with you. It's been an honor. You're the you're one of my uh, one of my favorite moments in my young career was having to wake up at 3:30 in the morning and interview you. Uh, you know, that's something that. I'll never forget, and I'm very grateful yeah. to have done that, man. I thought it was super dope, and that's a story I, I tell people all the time. Uh, so with that being said, man, good luck this uh, this weekend. Uh, hope safe you know safe travels, good health. And uh, hey, let Ariel Hawani know I said hello, man. I know you're going on that show here in a minute, so yeah. let him know I said hello, and uh, good luck uh, this weekend, brother. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you. Thanks for the interview. Absolutely. We'll speak yeah. after the fight again. Absolutely. You have a good one, brother. Cheers.